Good morning folks. We're up at Rivercoats this morning. I wasn't going to pull a camera out actually unless something amazing happened. And it did. Just up there is a woodpecker. And he's having a rattle on uh, one of these old dead uh, pine trees. So I'm just trying to be trying to be quiet in case in case we hear him fire off. That wasn't a woodpecker. That was a creaky tree. But it's relatively still today. In comparison to the past few weeks. Oh, Reggie's right on cue. I guess I'm putting the camera away. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as I'd bloody turned camera off, the woodpecker rattles away. Anyway, forget it for now. So, just a quick morning ritual with the little pooches, and then we're going to go and wire up the cables for the control panel, the signal cables, and the power leads for the elements. And then everything should be. <laughs> Did you see Reggie then out at corner? <laughs> he prickles himself on the brambles on his belly and he just pings into the air it's really funny but yeah everything should be ready to fire up after today provided there aren't too many interruptions and we can carry on with some other projects i've got a lot of admin to do at one point so there might be a day or two this week where the vlogs dry up a touch because admin is boring work and it doesn't make for a good video so, you know, that that is that. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you at work. Well, I hope the colour of this lake or pond... Reggie, don't drink it. Oi! Div. Hope it comes out. Obviously, this is um, the spoil heap or the slag heap of a... Reggie, out of an old mine, coal mine. And come on up here. And these are all artificial ponds and lakes. And uh, I don't know, I'm assuming that, I mean, there's a lot of life here, so it can't be too toxic. But I'm assuming that colour is contributed to by some heavy metal runoff, maybe from the spoil. Because all these hills around us are artificial. That is, that one is over there with that plantation on. These are all man made, Reggie. Come out. And uh, yeah, if you go down into the where the where the old mine was proper, uh, which I've walked around many times with you guys on camera, you can really see how contaminated the land actually is. Now this looks like it's recovering nicely, and they've done a good job at landscaping it, I think. But yeah, to me, that is a really kind of dark, vivid green, and I suppose it's encouraged it and that colour a little bit by the reflection of the trees but you know even just looking at this bit of water in front of me here it's got a very odd colour to it almost like verdigris is it you know the copper oxidisation I just thought something I'd share with you that I spotted whilst walking back to the car might be of interest might not here's another segment that's probably of no interest an extremely over-engineered bridge with very little in the way of pedestrian safety crossing a tributary to the River Idle known as the Meaden. I'll face this way because the wind's blowing behind me. And uh, yeah, the river is up considerably today. So I'm glad I didn't go to Plumber because there's no way I'd be crossing a ford. Reggie, out! He'll end up in there and I'll have to rescue him and I'm not doing it because it's cold. Well there's a good indicator. This is running into that lake and it doesn't ex exactly look like 
lovely fresh drinking water, does it? <laughs> I'd say no. This is steeper than it looks. So I'm pleased to say that the probes are cabled up for the temperature and the float valve for the boil kettle. And we're moving on to the three phase element for the HLT. So when I was talking to you guys the other day about this, I did uh, trip over my words a little bit and say I want to change it from star to delta. I didn't mean star to delta, although I thought I did in my head. What I meant was we want to move from three point star, which is this uh, was previously connected to these three points here. And I want to reintroduce the neutral leg, which is this little fellow here. So each element, as it runs down and up, there's one terminal, there's the other. There's one terminal, there's the other. There's one terminal, there's the other. Giving you three separate elements in total. Now one leg of each of those elements is um, commoned together using this little fancy triangular bar and that is the center point of the Y shape or star shape if you like and this is quite confusing because with it being a triangle it makes it look like a delta connection it isn't ignore the fact that that's a triangle and then coming out from each point imagine that's the center point obviously that is though coming out from each point 120 degrees electrically. I don't know what this angle actually is in real life. It makes no difference. Uh, are each of our line connections. So when the incoming power comes in, each sine wave for each line will be 120 degrees out of phase. And as one phase goes positive, the other phases are climbing down to negative and that twists around if you like. If you can imagine the uh, generator back at the power station, it's basically just a giant motor with three magnets on it and it's causing a, inducing a magnetic field within the wires wrapped around uh, the stator or something like that. And then that is basically being reflected here. These are the ends of those wires. So you don't actually have a neutral, which is something that took me a while to get my head around when I first started working on three phase. The neutral is only there if the path back to the generator via the other phases is broken. If you take one of these out and it automatically becomes a two phase, then you've got an unbalanced load because there's power on these two phases, nothing on that one. So in order to, um, what's the correct term, uh, balance that unbalanced load, uh, any remaining current would return back to the generating station via the neutral or via earth if the neutral wasn't introduced. And uh, that's, how, that's how it kind of works. And now it's a lot more complex than that, but it's, that's as well as I can explain it on, on a YouTube video that is just to give you a heads up on basically how it works. If you want to wire something like this up, I absolutely recommend you go and do your own research on that because uh, I'm not going to be responsible for somebody blowing themselves up. So I'm going to introduce, I'm just basically rewiring here, I'm going to introduce the three line terminals here, I'm going to introduce the neutral terminal there, and on this little socket section there, I'm going to introduce the earth. And then we've got all five cables terminated in the housing. And uh, the other end of the plug is already on. And just like that, there we have it. So there's a bit of a close-up. You can see exactly how this bad boy's wired. We've got line one, line two, line three neutral commoned together an earth so it just remains for me to replace the cap and that bad boy is ready to go so while I'm 
obviously doing all this work to the kit I'm spotting job after job that I can kind of do uh, that should have been done quite a long time ago for instance there's no insulation at the back here on the HLT and then I realise there isn't any underneath either on the cone or actually on this plate here so there are three places where I can stick some of this self-adhesive insulation to improve the efficiency of the HLT which with rising fuel prices is extremely important so I've got some of this sticky back foil foam insulation which seems pretty good actually it's got a decent U value for the size of it and unfortunately it's all rolled the wrong way so I'm not going to stick it on tonight I'm just going to roll them in the correct direction so it doesn't peel off when we stick it on and then I want to leave it overnight with some elastic bands on like this so it takes that shape but you can see what I've done I've basically just cut out the template of the cone that I would have used when I manufactured the tank um, cone <laughs> And then we're just going to roll that up and stick it on the side. And I'll probably do the same thing for the boil kettle, although it's not exactly that important. I could do the back panel, maybe, but the bottom isn't all that important for being insulated during a brew day. I might do it, though, for what it's worth. It probably makes sense, doesn't it? If I've got some more sticky back gear, the trouble is I'm just worried that because we hit a boil in that, in the, in the boil kettle rather than just 70 degrees the adhesive may fail so yeah I'll probably just do the panels first and see how we get on with that and uh, if it doesn't fall off on the HLT then I'll come back and do the boil kettle another day I don't particularly want to get under the boil kettle anyway until it's reassembled because with that chimney stack on there it's off centre balance and I've put that container of lactic acid up there just as a precaution because it doesn't take a big knock and it wants to tip over and well that would set us back a fair bit if that happened wouldn't it. I think I'm going to call it a day, it's gone five o'clock, it's beat me again. I've not managed to get all of the things wired up. It's this soldering, it takes a lot of time so all these connectors here need soldering on for the pumps so there's quite a few each one's got three connections it's slow going but it's worth it it's worth it in the end and I've managed to get all of the sensor probes soldered up bit of a mess on the floor as well isn't it but uh, we'll come in and give it all a clean up tomorrow but that's it, I'm done. I'm uh, I'm spent, so I'm going to go home. I'm rather tired, actually. So, uh, anyway, as the brewery. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, there's no point me rabbiting on because, um, yeah, I've gone blank. But tomorrow will be really interesting, I promise. <laughs> Cheers, I'll see you on the next one.